like, hurry, Mr. Bejron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. My name is Arthur Bergeron, and I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell, and we've done a series of presentations regarding various legal issues involving elders. Uh, and today's is, and there are some of those issues that are very big and cover a lot of territory. Today's covers a more specific issue, but it covers something that, because I know, I mean, the big, one of the biggest concerns that, we, that, we, that a lot of elders worry about, unless you've got a lot of money, is what the effect is on you if you end up getting stuck in a nursing home. So there is an important piece of that equation which you need to understand, which most people have not heard of, and that is something called the D4C pool to trust. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. So this is all about making the best of a bad situation. This is really about uh, dealing with issues regarding nursing home care. If you didn't do any of the advanced planning, I know you've heard, and we've done it in previous presentations and you've heard before, about protecting some assets and transferring things out, and there's a five-year look-back period, and there are a bunch of ways, things that you can do. But suppose you didn't do any of that. Uh, and most people don't. Most people don't, because uh, they just kind of really hope and therefore assume that this issue isn't going to happen to them, that no one's going to get stuck needing nursing home care. So I guess the, the, the moral of the story is, next slide, um, that if you do need nursing home care, um, you can always qualify for mass health. Always, always, always. The only question is, do you want to? You can always qualify for mass health. And one of the reasons for that is the D4C pooled trust. What is that? What is the D4C? Well, actually, uh, it, it, is, it comes from a federal statutory section. It's called 42 U.S.C. 1396P D4C. It's the last three letters. Uh, and it refers to a particular kind of trust and says that if you transfer assets into that <coughs> trust, um, then that transfer into the trust is not considered to be an invalid transfer or a gift and therefore disqualifies you in terms of qualifying for mass health. And if the money goes into the trust, that money does not have to be used or spent down to cover your nursing home care before you can qualify for mass health. So, and, and there's no limit to the amount of money that can go in there. Um, so the, the, in the basic rule, and like for, for example, I mean, we just had somebody that qualified for mass health. This is a woman who we were working with, her, her niece, who qualified for mass health. She had $900,000 in assets. She had a house, which we sold and turned that into cash. We did some other things, and then we, we transferred a huge amount of money into the D4C pooled trust, and then she qualified for mass health. So... Um, what, is it, what, what is it about these trusts? Um, there are, by the way, there are five of them here in Massachusetts, um, and, but we're going to go back to the previous slide. Previous slide. So they need to be, they, in order to be qualify as a pooled trust, and by the way, all of the information is also in, in your booklets, um, the money has to be held in a separate account that is maintained for the beneficiary, uh, but those accounts can be pooled. Um, so that for management purposes, all the money can be taken care of in one big lump sum. And the administrator of that fund has to be, or the trustee has to be a nonprofit organization whose purpose is to help people who are disabled, because of course everybody in a nursing home is kind of by definition very disabled. And finally, there has to be a provision in the pool trust that says that to the extent that, you have a, that the person in the nursing home has accumulated a bill during their lifetime, that after that person's death, if there is still money in the pooled trust, once, the, once the, 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 the trust has paid itself a fee, it needs to reimburse mass health whatever has been paid by mass health on account of that person's care. That's how the pool trust works. So why is it that you so you can always use this? The question is, why would you want to? Next slide. And by the way, those are the four. I had thought that there were five, but I'm, I'm, I deal with a lot of Alzheimer's folks. I think I'm catching it. I'm falling, <laughs> slipping. So there are four of them in Massachusetts right now. We have dealt with three of the four. Uh, the one we deal with the most is called the Plan of Massachusetts just because it's the most convenient. It's located in Newton, 
it's easy for folks to come out here, the social workers and stuff. If you want to, if you want to check these out and just get more information, all of these folks have web pages. Next slide. Uh, now the question is: Once money, now once again, this this is money that would have been money of an elder who is at this point in a nursing home, and it's been transferred to the pool trust. And now the question is: Well, what can the money be used for? And the answer is: Well, it can be used for anything. It can be used for anything as long as it, is, as it is used on behalf of or for the person who is the elder. Uh, if that person who is the elder uh, would like to have music wh where, where they are, then you can buy them any kind of DVD player or, 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 excuse me, any CD player or iPod, headphones, any of those things. If the person is still capable of getting out uh, and taking a trip, has a disability but could still do that, then it pays for all of the trip. If the person needs to go with someone, which is probably true if they're in the nursing home otherwise, it pays for that person too. Uh, if they want to go out to eat, it can pay for that. If they want flowers, if they want special furniture, if they want the super duper uh, 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 wheelchair. And I, I use this, to me this is the most, one of the most important examples. You know, I go, in the nature of my work, I go to nursing homes a lot. The most depressing part of going to a nursing home is getting there and seeing people who are in the hall and they're sitting there, you know, in that, in that wheelchair, and they're kind of like slumped over to the side, and they've like fallen asleep. And you, and, and you look at that, and you say, that's really sad. Um, but one of the reasons why that has occurred is because of the wheelchair, because that person is typically sitting in one of the nursing home's standard issue wheelchairs that's got a cloth back to it and those kind of high uh, shoulders. And so if you're out, because the you know, folks at the nursing home want you to be up and around and not lying in bed, um, and you want to fall asleep, that's how you have to do it, right? Well, what you could do is you could buy the super-duper wheelchair for that person, that the seat goes back and it's comfortable. And be because, because for a person who is in a nursing home, face it, this is where they're spending a lot of their time, is in the, is in the wheelchair. So to be, able to, to be able to have the money to give that to them, because it's their money, is like a wonderful thing. You can buy them a TV set. You can buy them any size TV set. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can bring them out to eat. You can have made meals catered for parties. It can pay for all of that. So what the bottom line is, if you can demonstrate that it's the, for the benefit of the elder, then it can be done. Uh, typically for large items, like the, like the, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, wheelchair, the D4C trustee would ask that you send them the bill and they'll send the check directly. For smaller items like buying clothes for the elder or buying little, you know, little things or maybe taking them out to eat, they'll ask that you send in the receipts and they'll reimburse the person who paid. Uh, now, who should use a D4C? Everybody in the nursing home. Everybody in the nursing home probably should use it. Now, you know, you, each person's case is a little bit different, so you really kind of want to make this decision for yourself, but let me explain why. Next slide. To explain why, I'm going to use the example that we've used kind of throughout. You remember what we've always tried to talk about Frank and Mary, and in this case, Frank has died, leaving Mary with a pretty standard-looking set of assets, right? She's got a house that's worth about $300,000. It was worth four, but then the market took a dive. She has an IRA that's worth about $150,000. Um, she has an annuity that's worth about $100,000, and she has a bank account, $75,000. So she has total assets of $625,000. And let's say that she has Social Security income of about $1,000 a month. Next slide. Um, the effect on Mary of going into a nursing home, if she is on <coughs> private pay, is that she'll be paying conservatively about $125,000 a year in nursing home care. That assumes uh, a monthly bill of about $10,000, and that is not $10,000 a month, and that's on the low side now. Um, so over five years, she will have used up all of her money. She will have sold her house, taken all of the money, spent it all down. There's the $625,000. Um, in addition, if she were spending that money down, the pulling out the annuity would probably involve her paying a penalty. Uh, if, she, if she is in the nursing home, she can qualify for mass health once she's spent the rest of the money down and still have the house. And that's the good news, but the bad news is that mass health immediately puts a lien on the house and says that they want the house to be sold within nine months. That's what the regulation says. So that's kind of where Mary needs to be going. Next slide. Uh, now, now, there are some things that Mary could have done ahead of time if she had been planning five years ahead of time. 
She could have put the house uh, and the annuity and maybe the IRA into, into trust uh, and had it in trust for at least five years. And it, as long as she didn't have the capacity to get the money back, then those assets would have been saved. But that's not this situation. We're assuming now that she had just left all that money in her, in her account. So uh, before we kind of go through the D4C, you need to know just kind of very basic MassHealth 101. MassHealth is the Massachusetts name for the, Ma for the Medicaid program. Uh, that's a federal program, and each state has a different contract with the federal government, which is why the things vary a little from state to state. So everything I'm telling you about Massachusetts doesn't necessarily apply out of state, although it may. Uh, in Massachusetts, in order to qualify for nursing home care, you have to have, uh, in order to qualify for Mass Health and have Mass Health therefore be paying for your nursing home care, you have to have assets of less than $2,000, countable assets of less than $2,000. That goes back to the $625,000 that we were talking about. Technically, she wouldn't have had to have spent everything, maybe could keep $2,000. Um, and you have to have income uh, that is less than the nursing home rate. Well, that's not hard because the nursing home rate, well, as we mentioned, the private pay rate is about $10,000 a month. Uh, and remember, Mary's income is only about $1,000 a month. We're going to talk a little bit more, though, about rates 